Okay, welcome everybody. This is CSIS 3020 Web Programming and Design. This is the third week. Probably the only video lecture for this week. I am sharing a join me session with any of the students that are willing to join in live. And every Friday at 6 o'clock, I'll just keep sending join me invitations for those of you who are not present in the classroom but would like to um, participate live. I have also shared with you guys videos on YouTube. In fact, early this week, I shared with you two video lectures about cascading style sheets on YouTube. You needed to watch that in order to um, complete your assignment that was due tonight. The assignment that was due tonight is the home page. So I'm expecting a zip file from you with the folder of the entire Eclipse project, which contains a web content folder, which should contain an index.html and a folder with images and another folder with styles that's what I'm expecting Okay. it's basically the customization of your template to your specific theme project theme Okay. and the home page must be name index.html okay and then once you're done, you update your wiki. So don't forget to update your wiki with that one snapshot, the first version of your home page. Okay? If you join me on the class, I will ask you to please put your name in there so I know who is attending the class. <coughs> All right. So, are there any questions about the uh, video lectures? Yes, definitely. That's something that I gotta I gotta keep track of. For instance, the um, week three video lecture, the first one that I put out on YouTube, that I made available at the beginning of this week. I looked at what students have watched it or not, and almost more than half of the students in this class have not watched the video lecture. So. Yes. I just refreshed. So now it's exactly half. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I make sure that I record my classes, that I put all the content that I can, following the samples from the textbook, and I record it and make it available for you guys. If you guys don't watch it, that's... The video lectures is basically where I put most of the content, 
my tips on what you what's do and what you guys are supposed to supposed to be looking for and doing what and I mean some of you guys already know me so I guess you have seen some of these videos before I don't know I don't know what to what to think but <clears throat> I'm still posting those video lectures for all of you who want to to um to see it. Okay. Now for next week for next week <clears throat> I have also shared with you video lectures and I hope you you start watching it because mastering JavaScript is one of the main topics in this course and that's exactly what we're going to be covering the next two weeks okay so the next two weeks you guys We'll need to know anything, everything that you wanted to know about JavaScript. And so I have published these two video lectures where I go sample for example from the book, chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9, which I also ask you to, to read from the textbook. Okay? So, that's it. Are there any questions? No questions? Anybody uh, from online that has any questions? If you c the question is if you cannot find a simple template or any template for your project <laughs> no, it's not okay to use the same template that I use. It's not okay to you to do a project with the same theme that I do. I already took that one. Remember, it's first come, first serve. Okay, so, let me see, let's go over my project, because this, this is exactly what I'm expecting from you, step by step, all the deliverables, etc., you should be mimicking the same stuff that I'm doing, that I'm providing, And um, the same steps, basically the the, the 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 same path that I'm taking to build my project week per week in this class. So let's start with the wiki. And why is it so important to start with the wiki? Because the wiki contains the specs, the requirements that you are building. Okay. And that's something that you and I have to agree upon. Now, in this case, my theme is about Timex, an online timesheet system, and I believe I already went through the problem statement with you guys, correct? Everybody knows what I'm trying to build. An online timesheet system that keeps weekly hours and I highlighted all the nouns and I just made my whole list and these are the guys the the main entity main entities in my system okay so I went out there and started looking for templates some kind of template I don't want to I don't want to have to build my entire home page and cascading style sheet from scratch okay I already know HTML and Cascading Style Sheet, 
but I don't want to build it from scratch. There are plenty of free open source templates out there. Templates, HTML templates, that you can get a whole bunch of look and feel, and then you can customize it. Okay, so I believe after spending a few hours on the internet looking for samples of templates and whatnot, some websites would actually give you like a sample of what it will look like, the menu, sidebars, and all that stuff. Then I believe I came across this template from website templatesonline.com this template is called age beauty okay this is what it looks like so I just downloaded it you have to leave your email address <laughs> on this website to be able to download it. <laughs> anyway, what you end up doing is you end up downloading a zip, right? A zip file. With basically an index HTML cascade style sheet and that's it. But keep in mind that this template, if you look at it, is an index HTML with a whole bunch of Latin, which I need you to customize, or I needed you to customize to your own theme. And that's exactly what I did in mine. I customized the template to my specific needs. And let me show you guys. <coughs> exactly where I I believe this is the zip that I downloaded. So notice that it has a folder with images, a default CSS, an index HTML, and then a licensed text. So when you unzip it, you come up with your index and your default cascading style sheet. When you open your index, this is the template that I downloaded. Okay. And then the idea is to get familiarized with the template, okay? Because you need to know your template very well. What do I mean by that? Well, you need to know what are the different sections and divisions in your template, because that's what you're going to be playing the next. That's what you're going to be playing with the next six weeks until you deliver a fully static HTML website. And what do I suggest you use? A really cool tool like Firebug. So you install Firebug for Firefox.
load it, and here it is. This is the HTML, the entire HTML, made out of the header and the body. So let's analyze the body. The body has a header, it has a page, and it has a footer. Okay, so let's take a look at the header. The header seems to be the part that contains the logo, the menu, all that cool stuff, right? So we dive into it and we see that there's two sections. There's the logo section, and there's the menu section. Okay? So this is what I'm talking about, that you guys have to dissect your template. You get you have to get to know it. <clears throat> and then you start looking at not only the sections but also what kind of cascading style sheets are playing are taking place here. All right? So, for instance, you see that this division, the logo division, contains the pound logo. Remember pound logo? You know what that means? Okay. The pound logo, the skinny style sheet with this background. Okay. In this border to the right. See this border over here? and it's white and you can play with it I mean you can you can actually start I don't know see that or to make it more meaningful there it is. That's that border to the right. Now it's black. And you start playing with it. You change maybe the look and feel. You don't like that blue color. You, you like another tone of it. You know. And then once you're done playing with it with the cascading style sheet and the and the and the HTML, then you copy and paste it in your Eclipse. Okay, so you can go to your cascading style sheet and you can do control A for everything and then you copy it and then you go into your Eclipse and paste it. If you refresh at this point, you will lose all your changes, as you can see. Okay. So let's dive a little bit. All this stuff, it's very, it's very, it should be straightforward for you guys. Um, um, if we go into the page, which is where eventually you're going to be putting the main content, right? This page, all this section called the page, as you can see, it has three parts to it. It has the content part and it has the sidebar and it has this div which is just a line actually just a line in the bottom and the content itself has three sections it has the welcome section the sample one section and the sample two section this is where you actually be going to be putting meaningful content Okay. But that's pretty much straightforward. Let's take a look at the header, see how the menus were implemented. As you can see, the menus have some kind of dynamic to it. When you hover the menu, notice that the colors change. It knows that you are over it. 
And those of you who have had the chance to watch my Cascading Style Sheet video lecture will know that it's actually playing with a style call and a style event called hover. Okay? So let's analyze it. Let's analyze how this was created. So we go into our logo. I'm sorry, not the logo, the menu. And we see that the menu, all this all this part which is the menu, is just one big unordered list. One big on order list. And each line item contains an anchor in this on order list. So the first line item, for instance, is an anchor whose title is homepage. It has an access key of H. And doesn't have a link for now. Right now I don't expect you to put any external links in your home page, obviously. And then, you know, the H is in bold. The capital letter, first capital letter of the word is in bold. And that's it. That's the anchor. So now we go into the actual anchor and then we move, we select the anchor, and then we move into the style. See what kind of style is governing the look and feel of this anchor. And you immediately see, oh, okay. This is what's going on. Any anchor inside a pound menu. Let me see, this is an anchor? Yes. Are we inside a pound menu? Not here. Not here. Yes. We are. We're inside a division whose ID is menu. So all the all this applies to the anchor. All this stuff. The border top, the color. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the next link. The next link is called Collections. This is the one, or this one, or this one, that have the dynamic to it by changing the color. How do we accomplish that? Well, let's take a look at the Browse Our Collections anchor. This is the guy. Notice that it has the same style that all the other anchors under pound menu have. Okay? But, and this is something that I'm going to go very quickly. Notice this. I'm going to hove over the menu. And you guys will notice how the style changes. There you go. You guys see that? It changed. I'm out of there, it changed. I'm in, it changed. What changed? It changed to something called hover. Anchor, colon, hover. That means the event hover over an anchor under a whatever tag, parent, pound menu, this should happen. And what is this? The border top color should change. And it only happens when I hover. That's why when I stay away from it, that style doesn't apply anymore. That's how you accomplish something like this. Okay? And you want to see exactly the line what it applies, you can actually go and take a look at default, well in this case, default CSS line 141. So we're going to go into our file system, we're going to open our default CSS, and I'm right now, just for the sake of argument, 
I'm going to open it with Notepad++, and I'm going to go to line 141. And here it is. The hover event over an anchor inside a pound menu tag or a tag with ID menu should have this color. Okay? And you can make it yellow. Save it. And then you refresh your page. So when you go here, did I change the right one? you um the rest of the stuff is just changing the wording the latin wording to you know content meaningful to what you guys are building and and, and in my case you know I just I just change it to it so it will look like this. And this is exactly the HTML that I did a snapshot of and put it in the wiki. And if you guys analyze with your Firebox tool this this page, you will see that it's the exact same header, page, footer, but obviously it has the meaningful content and that's it. Now, from here on, you guys are going to start putting more and more pages. Okay? Each page will represent a snapshot of what you think should be shown that fulfills a specific service in your project. Okay? And... Once you complete it, you create a snapshot and you put it in the wiki. So we're going to end up, or you guys are going to end up, with 10 UI sketches. One that represents login, one that represents timesheet list, one that represents enter hours. Each one of these is a functional requirement that I'm going to be implementing for the online timesheet system. You want to take a look at timesheet list? Here it is. You click on it, here's timesheet list. When you look at it, you should pretty much understand what is it that I'm trying to provide. I'm trying to provide for an employee called Mike Dover a list of his timesheets per week with number of hours, the department that they got charged, the status of this timesheet, whether they're approved, submitted, or pending, and the ID of that timesheet. This is 
timesheet list. In your case, for your project, you will have your own functional requirements. And that's something that you and I are going to have to start working on starting from next week on. Because it's very important, now that you know what you're going to be building, exactly what are the top 10 services that you're going to be providing to the users of your website. So you're going to have to have a functional requirements page, and I need you for next week to start building it. These are, and we're going to go through several iterations of them, believe me. But these are the ones that I am building. These are the top 10 services that I'm building for online timesheet system. If you guys see, first one is login. And it's a one or two sentence description of what it's about. It shouldn't take that long. What is logging? Logging is employees should be able to sign in, I mean to authenticate, to the web's application once or more each week. And I provided a link to the UI sketch of logging so you guys can look at it. This is what logging looks like. Pretty simple, be evident. Two boxes, the employee ID, and password and a button to sign in. The rest has the same look and feel. Timesheet list, that's the second functional requirement. Employees should be able to get a list of timesheets submitted in the past. If it has been submitted or approved, they cannot modify it. If it has not been submitted or it has been rejected, they can modify it and submit it. Two sentences, straightforward. That's functional requirement number two. You want to see? You provide a link to the UIH, which is the exact same that you saw on UI sketches. So for next week, what do I need you to do? I need you to submit your second page. And you guys are going to decide what that second page is based on the functional requirement number one. In my case, I decided to do the login. I mean, all of you are going to have to do the login, okay? So I need to see what the login looks like for you, okay? With the same look and feel as the homepage that you submitted tonight, okay? Pretty simple. Obviously, you're going to have to produce a second page or a second file with extension HTML that uses the same CSS, the original CSS that you provided, so that both pages, index HTML and the second page, whatever you want to call it, will have the same look and feel. Are there any questions? If you find any problems with cascading style sheet, please review the samples that I go through on the book in the video lectures. Or if you find the video lectures too boring, then at least go into the Moodle, download the source code that I'm also providing that I go through in the video lectures, import them into your Eclipse, and play with them. The idea is to master the HTML and the cascading style sheets. They go hand in hand. 
One provides the content, the other one provides the look and feel. You will be getting next week feedback on what you submitted tonight. In the meantime, please view the video lectures on <coughs> JavaScript. I already published them. They are on YouTube. You can watch them whenever you want. guys don't know by now that I'm doing join me sessions, you're not watching my video lectures. That's for sure. So please watch them. Watch them because that's going to cover the JavaScript. The next two weeks we are going to be covering JavaScript fully. Plenty of examples. The book has really good examples on JavaScript. Oh, and I'm going to provide also the the um, I'm also going to provide the source code, the source code so that you guys can download it and play with it. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions on what's due or any blocks that you encounter? Now, I'm also providing a news forum, right? You have any problems with HTML cascading style sheets, post a question there. Okay? Once in a while, go in there and look, are there any questions? I know that in the past day, few days, uh, there were some activity on the HTML cascading style sheets from, by Tim that got resolved. So it's something that, you know, if I don't... If I don't provide the solution, maybe some other classmate might provide the solution because they they already ran into that problem. Also, uh, sometimes I find really interesting questions from students, and if it's something that I need everybody to know, then I just open a forum about it. There was a question about the user authentication. How is the user authentication going to be envisioned in the project? And I explain there. You know, stu um, users in your website will have different roles, and depending on the role, you will provide different content. That's basically what it is. Okay? And so on and so forth. As we co start covering PHP and other th subjects, you guys will find that these forums will help you. Are there any questions? Yes. That's a really good question, Tim. Okay, so I'm saying you're going to have to authenticate your users, right? That means that depending on the role of the user that I just got authenticated, that you might have to provide different content. I'm not asking you to provide me a snapshot of every single sample of every single one of your users. No, just provide one. Just provide one. But keep in mind that that content will change somehow, right? The amount or 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 or, or the uh, de detail of the content will change depending on who is logged in. Um. That's all I have, guys. If you don't have any questions, really, that's all I have for tonight. Now, for next week, please have the video lectures 
make sure that you watch them so that when you come to class and you ran into some problems or you have some doubts, you have the questions to ask in class. Next week is going to be all about JavaScript. Tonight was all about cascading style sheets. So I'm going to assume from this point on that you guys already know everything that you need to know about HTML and cascading style sheets. And if the problems that are in the book are not enough, remember, W3 Schools is an excellent website. Why? Because it's a website that provides all the documentation that you need about cascading style sheets. And it provides samples where you can try it yourself. So live, right there, live, you see the code, you see how it's rendered. You modify the code, you see how it changes. Try yourself. Okay? You're going to find cascading style sheets for backgrounds, for text, for fonts, for positioning. And I go through, in the video lectures for cascading style sheet, I go through samples. Of not all of them, but some of them. So, it's all hands-on. It's the only, honestly, it's the only way you're going to be able to learn. Reading about it, it's not going to do it. You have to actually get your hands dirty and do it. You find a problem, go ahead into W3 Schools, research it. Do a, do a Google of it, and most probably, if it's a CSS or HTML question, you will be directed to W3 Schools. And it will show you right there this sample that will solve the problem that you're encountering. Okay. So the question from Stefan is, would you be putting them in a down downloadable form again? Yes, I will be putting the examples in a downloadable format. Oh, okay, you're talking about the videos. Yeah, I can do that. I can also put them in, a, in an AVI format if you want me to. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to me. I mean, you have it on YouTube. <clears throat> Is it possible for an online student to sit in your lectures? Definitely. In fact, Tim, you are an online student, right? Oh, no? Okay. Oh, okay, it was already full. Yeah, you can actually come to my classroom and, and I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can you can view it and join me if you don't want to be here. You can be here and 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 watch it live if you want to. I mean, it's up to you. It's up to you. Okay, there's a question about the wiki. When I did what on my wiki? The home page on my wiki. Yes. What about it? Correct. Why? You don't know. Okay. The very first time... I'm going to edit this page. The very first time that you create a link to a page and the page doesn't exist like this is a link to a, a page right and this is another link to a page this is this is wikilingua okay this is a link to another page but guess what if the page exists if problem statement the page exists the link will show as blue but if it doesn't exist, which I put it on purpose for that reason, if the test page, which is that link that shows up, does not exist, it will show in red. So what happens? When you click on problem statement, you know that will, you will go to a page that exists. But when you click on test page, you're going to get to this page that asks you, 
you want to create a new page called test page and what type is it? Is it HTML format, Creole format, and wiki format? And I ask you to put them all HTML. And then you click on create page, and there you go, you're creating the page. Next time that you come and render the home page, test page will show blue because the page exists now. Got it? Okay. So at this point, I don't want to see wikis where it's just a title and a paragraph. <laughs> no, please. It's very clear. This is way back from last week. I need you to have four links to four different pages. Problem statement, functional requirements, domain model, and UI sketches. Some of them will be empty. I understand that. But we are slowly but truly starting to put content into them. Problem statement at this point should be almost done. If you haven't highlighted your nouns, please do now. Okay? And make sure that it's a noun. I have seen some of you highlighting worked and approving. Those are verbs, guys. I don't want verbs. I want nouns. I don't want actions. I want entities. Okay? I want you to identify your main entities and put them here. As soon as I get to your home page, I go through your list of entities, I immediately know what you're trying to build. I should be able immediately to know what you're trying to build. And then I go into the functional requirements, and I should, right now, obviously, you're not going to have all 10 of them, but you know there's login required. So at least I should see one. Login. Employees should be able to sign in, blah, 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 blah. And every time that you complete a functional requirement, make sure you take a snapshot of what you completed and put it there. That's it. That's it. I will also be providing the source code week per week, the source code of my project. So you guys can see it, how it changes, how I add stuff to it. So tonight, I'm going to be giving you, I think I already gave you that, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, last week I did, because I have to give it to you in advance before you turn in yours, so you can see mine. Week second, look at this. Timex website, version 1, homepage. That was available for you last week. Tonight, I'm going to be putting Timex website version 2, homepage plus second page of my website with the login so you guys can look at it. E all the time. All the time, all you have to do is let me see what professor did in class. Let me see what he has in the wiki. That's where you got to be. That's it. All right. Okay, guys. Any questions? All right. See you next week. Mm-hmm.